Warning, some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Omaima was born in 1968 in southern Egypt. Unfortunately, her father was abusive. As the years went on, the abuse continued, and at the age of seven, Omaima was forced into having a female circumcision. Her parents ended up divorcing, and she moved with her mother to a new town, a town nicknamed the City of the Dead. The town got its nickname due to surrounding graveyards. Due to the forced circumcision, Omaima had increasing pains, especially when she was having sexual intercourse. At the age of 18, Omaima had lost her virginity, and because of this, her parents didn't believe she was suitable for a Muslim man. Around the same time, she met an American oil miner. The two married and immigrated to America in 1986. The two shortly lived in Texas before the marriage fell apart. Omaima left her ex-husband, but she found herself in a new country with no one to call. With that, she also had nowhere to go. Omaima started going to bars in hopes of finding someone who could financially support her. While looking for that, she started working as a nanny and a part-time model. At 23, she moved to California where she met a man named William Nelson at a bar. William liked to show off his wealth and this attracted Omaima. William also had five children and 17 grandchildren, and claimed to have a big successful ranch in Texas. He walked around in fancy clothes and had a red Corvette as his vehicle. Amaima and William got married in 1991 and decided for their honeymoon they would visit William's family in Texas. When the married couple saw the family, there seemed to be no problems, and despite the couple's age gap, the family welcomed Amaima as one of their own. From what they said, the pair seemed to be happy. On the 1st of December 1991, Omaima drove William's red corvette to an ex-boyfriend's house. The ex-boyfriend's name was Jose, and the two of them only briefly dated. He found Omaima sitting at the front of his house, and when he asked what she was doing there, Omaima had a terrifying story. From what she claimed, William bound and raped her repeatedly for days. While this happened, she claimed she hadn't eaten or drunk anything too. At one point, Omaima said she got her hands free and hit William over the head with a lamp, killing him. After explaining what happened to her, Omaima asked Jose for a pretty big favour. She asked him to help dispose of William's body. In exchange, she offered him $75,000 and two motorcycles. He played it calm and told her to sit in his truck. The moment she got in his truck, he called the police. The police arrived a little later and questioned both of them. Omaima told the officers he was lying, and that's when the police asked if they could search William's car, which she agreed to. Inside the car, the police found a handbag, and inside that handbag was body parts. A coroner was called out, and he positively identified the body parts to be human. After finding the body parts in the handbag, police then searched Omaima's and William's house. What the officers weren't expecting was to walk into a horror scene. In the kitchen, police found a pot inside an oven, and inside that pot, they found vegetables, pieces of turkey, and human hands. The hands had been boiled. Police then moved to the freezer, where they found William's decapitated head, which had also been boiled. In the bedroom, they found a mattress, which was soaked in blood. The bedposts were also broken. When they found what was left of William, it showed he had been the one which was restrained for days. There was no sign that Omaima had hit him with a lamp. William was stabbed in the chest multiple times. He was also castrated, but the finishing blow was being hit repeatedly in the head with a clothes iron. Police and media believed Omaima was a cannibal because some of the evidence indicated it. When the police located what was left of William, they found 80 to 100 pounds of him missing. To this day, Omaima claims she never ate William and that she isn't a monster. 
It's been confirmed that she restrained, castrated, murdered, dismembered, boiled, and cooked William, but I'm sure she's a lovely lady. Moving on from that, it has been confirmed by neighbours that the garbage disposal system was on the entire weekend of William's death. So it is technically possible that she didn't eat William. I wasn't able to find any sources to prove that police looked at the garbage disposal system, so I assume nothing was there. Omaima had claimed multiple times that she had been raped and that's what led her to murder William. Well, a rape kit was performed on her and there was no proof indicating she had been sexually assaulted. There were also no marks on her body to prove that she was restrained. At first, Omaima claimed she killed William in self-defense to her ex-boyfriend, Jose. After that, she claimed she didn't kill William. Then after police searched her house, she claimed she didn't remember killing him. And later on, she said to police that she saw two spirits telling her to murder her husband. Police believe William consented to BDSM play, where he was bound, and after being bound, his fate was sealed. Due to evidence I'll mention in a bit, police believe that Omaima threatened to kill William, and that she wanted access to his finances. When William refused, police believe she killed him. Her trial began in 1992 at age 24. Her defense tried to claim that Omaima had been abused and due to this she suffered a psychotic break. A witness told the court that he met Omaima and was later bound for BDSM play. After being bound, the witness claimed she threatened to kill him if she didn't gain access to his finances. The way the witness survived was he broke free and fought Omaima off. He told the court he didn't report this to the police because he was embarrassed. Omaima tried to tell the court a story that she was molested, abused, and tortured throughout her life. Because of this, her forced circumcision became a big part of the trial. The defense's psychologist stated that she had PTSD, and if William demanded sex, it could be possible that she could snap. Omaima made it clear to the court that William was abusive towards her, and that on her honeymoon, William said that he could murder and bury her. She also said William had thrown her cat out of a moving car. None of these have been proven or disproven. On the 13th of January, 1993, Omaima Nelson was convicted of second degree murder and was sentenced to 28 years to life in prison. Omaima first became eligible for parole in 2006, but she was denied it when the commission found she was unpredictable and a serious threat to public safety. She then became eligible for parole in 2011, but it was denied by the parole board, citing she had not taken responsibility for the murder and she would not be a productive citizen if she was set free. Omaima won't be able to seek parole again until 2026. Her case has been compared to a fictional serial killer and her case has been televised on two shows, Happily Never After and Deadly Woman. There are signs that Omaima has mental health problems due to her abusive upbringing and I will never support the type of parenting she suffered but I don't believe that dismembering your husband is the way to go. I don't know if William was abusive, I don't know if he friend Omaima, but I don't believe William deserved to die, especially in that horrific way. I only hope he can rest now. Hey guys, it's been a while. Um, 2020 has been a roller coaster for me, and I'm so sorry it took me half a year to upload a single video. <laughs> Back in June and July, I was making progress on three videos at once. They all got corrupted, so I tried working on one video at a time and it also got corrupted. By this point, I'd also start my new job and I kind of gave up on YouTube and wanted to focus more on my personal life. I'm not sure if I'm fully back yet, but what I can say is I still love making these types of videos and thank you for all the constant support and love. I know full well that most of my older videos aren't perfect. Hell, some of them are downright terrible, but still, you're here, so to the people who are watching this, thank you. With that being said, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.